Chapter 4 Stretcher After helping Lauren to lay Mr. Large out in the recovery position, Rat dived into his tent and woke his training partner, Andy Lagan. Lauren woke Bethany, who in turn woke up a bunch of other kids, including her 10-year-old brother, Jake. Within minutes of collapsing, Mr. Large was illuminated by the torches of 26 partially dressed cherubs. He's drifting in and out of consciousness, Lauren explained anxiously as she crouched over Mr. Large. If his heart's weak and he's not getting enough oxygen, he could end up brain damaged. Has anyone tried making a stretcher? Bethany asked. How? A boy asked sleepily. Use your initiative, Lauren tutted. Tent fabric, tent poles, branches, whatever. You're supposed to be trained cherub agents. I'm asking you to rustle up a stretcher, not build a time machine. Jake interrupted. We all hate his guts. Do we even want to save him? Don't be a tittle your life, Bethany said, flicking her brother's ear. He may be a scumbag, but we're not going to stand here and watch a man die. Shouldn't we be giving him the kiss of life? Rat asked. Lauren shook her head. His breathing is okay, and his heart is beating. I think he's just gone into shock. Maybe he's had a stroke, a boy said. Maybe, 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 Lauren yelled, irritated by the gawpers surrounding her as she stood up and backed away from the patient. We only know basic first aid, and all we have is, like, bandages and stuff. We need to get him to a hospital and fast. Where's a reef in the truck? Jake asked. He just left to drive to the supermarket, Rat said. I'll tell you what, how about we send messengers off in different directions? There's got to be a farmhouse or something around here. Good idea, Lauren nodded. Sort it out and someone else can take Large's phone up to the top of the hill. You might get a signal from there. Rat picked Andy and three other fast runners and sent them off in different directions. A fifth was told to run up the adjacent hill. Are you completely sure it isn't one of his tricks? Jake asked suspiciously. I wouldn't put it past him. Bethany tutted. Look at the state of him, moron. You can't fake all that sweat. What if he took a special pill that made him go queasy or something. Jake, you're not helping, Bethany shouted, and you're starting to wind me up, so why don't you get out of my face before I deck you? Try it, Jake sneered. I might be little, but I'm harder than you. Oh, you reckon, Bethany sneered back, giving her brother an almighty shove. The crowd moved aside as Jake lashed out at his sister, His boot connected with her thigh, but his fist swished past her nose, missing by millimetres. Bethany grabbed her brother's flying arm and twisted it up behind his back. She took the elastic waistband of his tracksuit bottoms with her other hand, hitched him off the ground and slammed him down on his belly. Whilst Jake was still winded, Bethany straddled him and sat across his back. Yeah, Jake, you're so hard she yelled jubilantly. Lauren was furious. She couldn't believe that her best mate was having a pointless fight with her brother in the middle of a major crisis. Leave it out, she screamed. We all need to think straight. A few minutes could save his life. Coming through, a couple of girls shouted. The pair had made a stretcher by breaking two wooden stakes from a nearby fence and running them through a couple of sleeping bags. Jake was humiliated and tried to hide it as Bethany let him up. Meanwhile, the girls laid the stretcher on the grass beside Mr. Large. Oh, he's really heavy. We'd best roll him on, Rat said. Not only was Large extremely tall, he also carried a great mound of fat around his midriff. It took five kids to roll him onto the sleeping bag fabric. Once he was in position, 
Lauren and Rat took up the poles at the front, with the pair who'd made the stretcher at the back. Heave! Lauren shouted, as the foursome bent at the knees and raised Mr. Large off the ground. Some of the other kids realised that they were struggling and took part of the weight by grabbing the poles along the side. Oh, he stinks of booze, someone complained. Oh, which way? Rat groaned. Grrrr! Large shouted groggily. Oh, he's awake, said one of the boys standing along the side. Forward, Lauren ordered. Head towards the track. We're about a mile from the main road. We can jog it in ten minutes and hitch a ride from there. But as Lauren and Rat stepped forward, Large insisted on sitting up. Stay still, Bethany shouted desperately. You've just had a heart attack. Poppycock, Large bellowed. Let me off this contraption! Large swung his legs around, upsetting the balance of the stretcher. The two girls at the back couldn't hold on, and the wooden beams slipped through their hands, splintering their fingers as the stretcher crashed to the ground. As the girls moaned in pain, Large made a brief attempt to stand up before clutching his chest and collapsing into another spasm. <gasps> oh, I'm dying, he gasped. Rat tried to calm him down. You need to sit still, Norman. We've sent messengers in all directions to get help. Norman? Large growled. How dare you call me Norman? You address me as Sir! He's drunk on top of everything else, Lauren said, shaking her head with contempt. Shall we try getting him back on the stretcher? Bethany asked. What's the point? He's too heavy for us to carry if he won't stay still. Oh, I want my Haley, Mr. Large moaned as he sat in the grass. I want to live to see my beautiful girl get married. You're not going to die. Rat insisted, making a brave second stab at calming Large down. You're in shock. You're very weak. You've got to lie flat on the ground and try to stay calm. Lauren felt massively relieved as she saw a set of car headlights crawling along the dirt track towards the lines of tents. It was a small Hyundai with an elderly lady behind the wheel and Rat's mate Andy Lagan in the passenger seat. The woman looked appalled when she stepped out of the car and saw the giant man thrashing about on the ground. He's dead drunk, the woman said. Are you sure he's had a heart attack? Andy ran around from the passenger seat and tried to reassure the heavily perfumed woman that Mr. Large wasn't just roaring drunk. I'm not having that in my car, she said indignantly. I can smell the drink on him from here. It's only done 4,000 miles. What if he vomits inside? As she said this, Large twisted over on his side and made a deep groaning sound. Now listen, lady, Lauren said desperately. We're out of options here. He could die. You've got to help us get him to the hospital. No, no, no. I'll drive back to my house and call an ambulance from there. It's less than 10 minutes drive. Lauren couldn't believe what she was hearing. An ambulance might take a half hour or more to get here, you stupid old bat. Bethany squealed. Lauren looked at Rat and pointed towards Mr. Large. Get him into that car. Hold on, young miss, the old lady yelled. I'm not taking orders from you. I'm not driving that man anywhere. I'll drive him then, Lauren shouted back. Isn't a man's life slightly more important than your precious upholstery? Rat, Andy and several others began dragging Mr. Large towards the car. The woman turned to go after them, but Lauren grabbed her willowy arm and pulled her back sharply. I'm truly sorry, Lauren said, as she saw that the elderly lady was frightened and close to crying. It was odd that she'd been kindly enough to stop her car for Andy and drive to their aid, 
but now seemed more concerned about her car than Mr. Large's life. Lauren guessed it was just that she was old, eccentric, and not up to handling stress. Come on, Lauren said, trying a gentle attack as the lady struggled to free her arm. We need your help. Can you tell us the way to the nearest hospital? But the old woman screamed and made a desperate sobbing noise, which made Lauren feel absolutely awful. The two girls who'd built the stretcher grabbed her flailing arms and tried getting her to calm down. With all the madness going on, Lauren hadn't noticed another messenger driving inside a BMW. The wax-jacketed driver emerged, holding a leather bag of the type usually carried by doctors. What is this? Lord of the Flies? The man said, shaking his head as he surveyed the scene. Are you a doctor? Rat asked. A vet, I'm afraid, the man explained. He knelt over Mr. Large and grabbed his wrist to take a pulse. His heartbeat is extremely weak. Will he live? Rat asked. Depends upon a lot of things, the vet said, as he reached into his pocket for his car keys and dangled them in front of Andy. Two of you lads go around to the boot of my car. You'll see a black oxygen cylinder and a box of disposable masks. It's heavy, so lift it together. Pure oxygen will make his breathing easier and take some of the strain off his heart. Then we'll lay him out over the back seat of my car and I'll take him to accident and emergency. The presence of the vet was a great relief to the cherubs. Unfortunately, Lauren and Bethany still had the old woman on their hands. I'm telling the police, the woman shouted as she pointed accusingly at Lauren. You're car thieves. You, you tried to kidnap me. Lauren grasped the woman's shoulder and spoke as gently as her adrenaline rush would let her. Why don't you take some deep breaths? We'll make you a nice cup of tea and then you can drive home after you've calmed down. Criminals, the woman screamed again. She turned her head with surprising speed and bit on Lauren's middle finger. Lauren instinctively ripped her finger out of the woman's mouth. Unfortunately, a denture came flying out with it and Lauren squealed in horror as the warm plastic teeth hit her in the face. Meanwhile, Rat, Andy and the vet had settled Mr. Large into the rear of the BMW and the vet had fitted him with an oxygen mask. Have you got no other adults here? The vet asked the girls. There's one, Lauren nodded as she clamped her bloody finger beneath her armpit. But he's gone into town to buy groceries. I expect he'll be back pretty soon. Right, the vet nodded. I'll call the police and tell them you're out here. I don't like the thought of leaving you lot unsupervised for too long. Then he turned and looked at the old lady. You look like you've had a bit of a turn, my dear. How about you take a ride to the hospital with me? Yes, the woman sobbed. Get me away from these animals. This one attacked me. Now she's stolen my teeth. That's not what happened, Lauren said defensively. The vet gave Lauren a reassuring look. Okay, my dear, he said to the old woman as he put an arm around her back. No hanging around. I've got a very sick man in the back seat. Bethany chased after the two adults and caught up just as they were getting in the BMW. That's her teeth, Bethany explained as she handed them to the vet. They've been in the grass, so you'd better rinse them off before they go back in her mouth. <laughs>